Our next speaker, 5.11, Mo. Hello again. Fifth time's a charm, huh? Well, you already know my stance on calling for a ceasefire by now. But my purpose today is to speak to you as a father of a two-year-old boy and a baby girl on the way. My wife, who's standing right behind me here, is seven months pregnant, and we can't wait to meet our baby girl. So in honor of my pregnant wife and my future baby girl, I'd like to focus this speech on the pregnant women of Gaza. So I'm gonna start off with one of the most horrific stories that happened just last week. An Israeli tank ran over a pregnant Palestinian woman back and forth and back and forth until the fetus came out of her body. Do I need to repeat this again for you? Do you think I enjoy telling this story? Hell no. But do you need to hear it? Absolutely. Why? Because I'd like you to tell me how this act of pure evil is Israel defending itself. How this act of pure evil is targeting or thwarting Hamas. Imagine being a father that witnesses this happen to your wife and unborn child. Would you as a father sit there idly for the rest of your life doing nothing or join a resistance against the oppression of barbaric murder of your people? This is just one of the thousands and thousands of stories. There are 50,000 pregnant women in the Gaza Strip according to the United Nations Population Fund and more than 180 births taking place every day. The complete breakdown of the healthcare system coupled with the lack of food, clean water, and proper sanitation means that 50,000 pregnant women and 68,000 breastfeeding mothers in Gaza are facing the risk of preeclampsia, anemia, bleeding, infections, and death. And even when they give birth, there isn't enough fuel to keep incubators running, which results in deaths of many newborns. Premature births have also increased by 30%, as stressed and traumatized pregnant women face many challenges such as walking long distances in search of safety, running away from bombs, and being crowded in unsafe shelters. And there's now a significant increase in miscarriages, congenital abnormalities, stillbirths, mental health disorders, and maternal deaths. And now there's no space left for newborns and not enough medical staff to care for them, thus resulting in newborns being grouped together and being abandoned for hours on end. And just a couple days ago, the Israeli occupation forces arrested and detained a pregnant woman as a hostage with no charges, which they do regularly. And speaking of hostages, you're about to hear a group of dehumanizing hypocrites that are here today asking for the release of their hostages without a mention of the over 10,000 Palestinian hostages being held, a majority of which are held without charge or due process. I'm standing here right now as a father and a husband to a pregnant wife, looking you directly in the eye, asking you to simply make a statement as a city, as human beings, saying that this this needs to stop permanently. If you're unable to do this simple gesture because of pressure from a group of people that think Palestinians are subhuman, specifically those that contribute to some of your campaigns, then you are a failure of a human being and are simply heartless. So in the spirit of newborns and babies, here's a little nursery rhyme I wrote for you guys. It's time for you to swallow your pride and push these lying Zionists aside because now you can no longer hide. It's time for you to take the side of human beings that have had their rights denied. It's time for you to call for an end to this genocide. Thank you. Thank you.